though for a time those things which are of true value may be surrounded by counterfeits those counterfeits nonetheless detract nothing from the true value of what was there before good evening everybody Hell's Unicorn here once again and I just wanted to basically do a little talk about the current state of politics uh, specifically in lieu of the advent of the Tea Party <clears throat> I've been somewhat of a measured skeptic of what is known as the 2009 Tea Party, ergo the Tea Party that formed uh, under the uh, watchful eyes of Glenn Beck, Sarah Palin, Michelle Bachman, the whole bunch. I thought that these people were, on some issues, okay, but uh, in terms of their entire outlook on uh, politics in general, I thought they were very far behind the curve and just maybe one step removed from neoconservative orthodoxy, which is generally a rehash of early 20th century progressive Democrat ideology vis-a-vis -vis Mr. Woodrow Wilson, the worst president in the history of this country. <clears throat> Now, with the recent vote on the Patriot Act and the auspicious vote of Tea Party caucus leader Michelle Bachman in favor of some of the worst uh, components of this uh, egregious violation of the Fourth Amendment, I have been doing a little bit of analytic thought, let's just put it that way, towards what exactly has been going on here. And I'm generally of the opinion that the 2007 Tea Party, which was the Ron Paul Tea Party, which I consider myself a proud adherent to, is still in existence, and it is still a minority, albeit a very vocal minority, which had its voice heard at the recent CPAC conference. Nonetheless, the 2009 Tea Party, which has essentially flocked to the label of the 2007 Tea Party, is a bit larger, a bit more organized, because it's not really a grassroots movement. It's more of a contrived movement that was put together by some members of the Republican Party who saw the writing on the wall for the neoconservative of people like Dick Cheney and George W. Bush. Few people want to be associated with these individuals. Nonetheless, there are still many among us who are scared shitless by the idea of being attacked by uh, turban-toting terrorists uh, from caves in Afghanistan, and so we simply need to have the FBI and the NSA spying on us, reading our emails, and doing all of this other crap with uh, the phone companies and telecommunication companies being their willing servants. I, for one, am not okay with this, and I will be as vocal about it as I can in the days to come despite the fact that it may prove to be annoying by some who may have recently subscribed to my channel who are probably more of the Glenn Beck persuasion. Long story short, my views are as such, and I think they are very much in conformity with the heart of libertarianism. A free country is a must. A, pro a prosperous country necessarily follows a free country, but you cannot have a prosperous country without a free country. So in spite of the fact that people like Michelle Bachman and others have it right in terms of free market practices, uh, more so than their Democrat opponents, they don't ultimately offer us a prosperous party because we will still be spending millions of dollars, billions upon billions, I should say, on misguided foreign policy adventurism and also in woefully over over bloated military budgets and uh, other things that basically find themselves uh, going into the military industrial complex as it were we have money flowing wealth just oozing out of hard-working people in this country that is essentially being poured into either the entitlement toilet or the bottomless pit of things that go boom 
outside of the borders of this country and sometimes inside this country. It's very frustrating because it's utterly needless. I need only cite the broken window fallacy to just demonstrate to people how war does not create prosperity. Yes, it is necessary for the defense of that which makes prosperity possible, but it does not create prosperity. No more than a protection racket breaking windows and then offering protection to the owners of those windows so they will not be broken again. There is money wasted to repair the windows and there is money wasted paying people who broke the windows in the first place to protect them. And this gets me into another uh, recent event. I actually took a little bit of time out of one of my work days to listen to a little bit of Rush Limbaugh's show, and he was lamenting the fact that uh, Ron Paul had won the CPAC conference, and he was just going on and on about how Paul busses his supporters in. This is an insult to my intelligence, and I have a measure of respect for Rush Limbaugh because he does point things out. Things such as the uh, link between the current president and General Electric and also with MSNBC, that's stuff that he has talked about. He's not the only one talking about it. You can get that information from Jack Hunter. You can get it from Alex Jones. You can get it from Webster Tarpley. You can get it from a number of people, but he is at least talking about it, and he has a bigger audience than they do, so more people hear about it. But when he chides out this childish bullshit about how Ron Paul busses his supporters in. What is he busing them in with? He is not somebody with endless pools of donor money like Sarah Palin is. He's not getting 500 or $5,000 a plate every time he does an event at some place where they're serving food and beverages. We are not bussed to these events. We bus ourselves or we drive ourselves to these events. We are not astroturf and it is very, very insulting to, do, to refer to us as such. It's a lie. I mean, it's, it's offensive enough when, we, when I get lumped in with other Tea Party people by people like Nancy Pelosi and I get called a racist or a Jew hater or all of this other vile garbage. But Coming from you, it's a little bit more aggravating because you should actually know better, Rush. But you choose not to. Willful ignorance is equally, if not more, offensive than unintentional stupidity or mental retardation, which is how I describe the neolibs uh, under the tutelage of the Jesuits, which is basically what you get with Joe Biden and Chris Dodd and Pelosi and all those other clowns that pretend to be Catholics. But it's just unnecessary. That's just how I'm going to describe all this. All of this is unnecessary. Rush Limbaugh, when he says stuff like this, and when he constantly plays interference for the Patriot Act and for George W. Bush, it just it's like that idiot that runs around all day with a picket sign that makes no sense whatsoever at a political rally. Like, it literally says free markets, not people. It's equally as absurd as the the mainstream liberal version of that picket sign, which is free people, not markets. You can't really have one without the other. Now, I would assert that free people precedes free markets, but that one is a necessary consequence of the other being in place. Yes, free markets are the expression of liberty, but liberty is necessary in order for them to exist. We don't get free markets with people that support abridging, constraining, or even destroying our civil liberties. If we are not free to say what we believe and to write what we believe, trust me, that is going to have an effect on how productive we are, how much work we put into what we do, how many services we supply the economy with, goods and services. It's all interconnected. When you injure one, the other is necessarily injured. 
And just for the record, I don't think that people like Rush Limbaugh even have a true grasp of what free markets actually entail. I think they have a very rudimentary understanding of it, but when the rubber meets the road, when it comes to things like wasted tax revenue on unnecessary military spending or simply offering us a smaller version of the entitlement programs that we get with the Democrats, it's ultimately not free market. Uh, it's not free markets that we're dealing with. It's a semi-free market. And whenever you have a compromise between poison and health, poison usually ends up winning. It might take a little longer to kill you, but it eventually will if you keep consuming it. So, in retrospect to everything that's happened, I look back at recent events and also less recent events, going back to 2007. I am still cautiously hopeful that the true Tea Party, the Ron Paul movement of 07, still has what it takes to continue to push our message and to hopefully win over this country and bring it back to something that resembles a free country. But in order for that to happen, there needs to be a little bit of cold reality here with regards to what the Tea Party that we see in the news every day actually is and how far it's actually going to go. There may be some hope to peel off some of these people and bring them into the true libertarian mindset, but as it stands right now, there's still a lot of work to be done. You're not a libertarian if you just support everybody being able to own their own guns, but then essentially supporting the government being able to have much bigger guns and the ability to coerce people into serving overseas to use those guns. I'll just leave it at that. With prudence to myself and benevolence to all of you, good evening.